Hey everyone, have I here with another video on Dragon Ball Z Dokkan Battle. In this video, we're going to be discussing about Global's next Dokkan Festival exclusive, whether it's either going to be Ginyu or Raditz. So with that, if you're new to my channel, like, subscribe, comment below, do all that good stuff. Let's go ahead and dive right in. So yeah, this is basically the discussion until 7 year anniversary, because we do have one more celebration in between right now and July. And of course, that's the month of June. And really what's left for Global to get is really one of these two units and the celebration here. So um, so yeah, before we get into these amazing, amazing game changing, game breaking LRs, um, you know, the interesting thing when it came to JP was that these were the units that introduced the 200% leaders. But of course, Global has gotten a few already. So it's not as hyped. But yes, these units are still top tier best units in the game when they come out. So um, now let's talk about these two units. And I, I would say one is definitely more useful than the other, <laughs> to say the least. And uh, of course, we're talking about Captain Ginyu versus the almighty physical Dokkan Festival exclusive Raditz. And... The thing is, Raditz definitely gets a really, really hard, um, I think, assessment for what they did with the unit. It's He's just not overly impressive, whereas Ginyu, on the other hand, uh, I don't know what you know Team A or Team B was thinking when they designed uh, either of these units here, but Ginyu got a really, really nice upgrade. Um, good leader skill, etc, etc. We'll, we'll actually break the unit down in Ginyu in just a few seconds here, but uh, in the celebration itself, now one or the other, in reality the celebration for Raditz for me I would say is a little bit more hype because really all Captain Ginyu got was the easy aid to the free-to-play Ginyu Force and some other easy aids to some units that, you know, in my opinion not overly overly useful so uh, but anyway I think the celebration is probably leaning toward Captain Ginyu I think all things are pointing that way but there is a slight chance we get Raditz and it really in my opinion if we can get Raditz out of their way that might be that might be where it's at so uh, yeah everybody can save some stones and uh, but I think with the LR banner if they're gonna do an LR banner here with Ginyu and Piccolo I think people would summon on that banner particularly, uh, even though it's an LR banner, but not necessarily on the Raditz banner. However, Captain Ginyu, a very, very useful unit for Terry Crying Conquerors and Planet Namek Saga, um, could be very helpful for completing certain events in the seven year anniversary. So anyway, let's talk about each one of these here, first starting with the Captain Ginyu. And uh, <laughs> like I said, um, two different teams it seems like we're designing these units here so the Captain Ginyu is actually a transformation character um, he goes from Captain Ginyu to Ginyu Goku in active skill which is really nice you get to choose when that gets activated but let's look at the leader skill here terrifying conquerors plan dynamic saga 170% across the board three key but you also get HP and attack defense 30% for a 200% leader for space traveling warriors now the interesting thing here is a majority of space traveling warriors are tearing Conquer and con conquerors and um being that i think that helps out you know the teams that you're able to build here but on the other hand as passive you're gonna generally speaking want to run some ginyu force units versus you know a multitude of different tearing fine conquerors slash um space traveling warriors so the super attack does provide prior to your transformation it raises defense unconditionally a Kaioken mechanic uh, and causes immense damage to enemies so your de your defense can you know skyrocket it's one of these stacking units that for long events very very useful now the passive skill is again just really interesting what they did here and then when you transform even more so so this is the true value of the Ginyu Force uh, attacking defense 180 percent we're seeing a lot of that as the base uh, power creep here for you know basic attack and defense increase and plus an additional 50% when performing a super attack to attack okay that makes sense there here's the interesting thing is it launches an additional attack and that has a medium chance of becoming super attack 
guaranteed, right? So you're getting an automatically additional attack with that medium chance. And then if you're adding another opportunity on the hit of potential, you're gonna get possibly another super attack. So you can get three super attacks off. That's raising your defense by 30% every single time. And that stacks. So that's very, very, very strong. And then it's a, um, a boosted unit if you're using Ginyu Force category allies up to 50%. So you get an additional attack and defense 10% per Ginyu Force category ally. Again, up to 50%, and it's a support unit. So, can you force category allies attack and defense 30%? Would have liked to see like maybe one key, but I, I guess I can't complain. It's already pretty amazing. And then, attacks effects effective gets all types when there's another Ginyu Force category ally on the team. That's it. Like, <laughs> like usually you would see like attacking in the same turn, but no, it's on the team your attacks are effective against all types just like that <laughs> okay and this is pre-transformation so um the active skill when you transform pretty easy to do here it's body change can be activated when hp is 70 percent or less starting from the fourth turn on the battle so i think it's pretty uh, simplistic on that end and uh, under 70 percent with uh, the fourth turn link skills freeze the army gentlemen respect ginyu force loyalty Signature Pose, Fierce Battle, then Categories, Planet Dynamic Saga, Ginyu Force, Dragon Ball Seekers, Terrifying Conqueror, Special Pose, Space Traveling Warriors, and Carotid uh, Body of and Mind. And the stats, 19-2, 14-4, attacks a little low, and then 10-9. I don't really care about defense if you're doing a bunch of super attacks here. Boy, you're going to be um, really, really strong on the defensive end. Now, you would think, okay, well, all right, let's go ahead and body change right change body here and go to uh, ginyu uh, goku here and it's not all that additionally oppressive but to say the least when you transform you lose the stacking ability for defense now you get to raise and stack attack okay so you get to make that decision when you feel like defense is already strong enough to handle the event then you just go ahead and transform and your attack is now going to be able to stack here and uh, on top of that you when you start out you're under 70 percent hp now you're going to recover 59 percent which is kind of unnecessary you can just do 30 percent you're generally going to be at 100 percent here but for sure you're going to be 100 percent with 59 percent hp uh once only i guess if you're lower than than that then uh uh, you can still transform after the fourth turn, but the attack and defense increases um, by 20% to 200%. So usually what you've been seeing with transformations, that's the case from like 180, 160 to 180 or 180 to 200. We've been seeing that. And then plus the additional attack 50% when performing super attack, that stays the same. And again, launches an additional attack and the chance uh, and a medium chance of becoming a super attack, that stays again the same. But here's the difference. Plus an additional attack and defense, and chance of performing a critical hit, and chance of evading enemies' super at or attack, including super attack, plus 10% with each attack performed. So not super attack, attack. So right off the bat, when you attack, you get an additional attack guaranteed. So that's two attacks. So you're going to get 20% to boost to attack, defense, and critical hit chance, and evasion 20 percent right off the bat after that first turn and then that second turn you can possibly even max it out to 50 percent if you uh, attack three times so that's pretty outrageous that you're going to get attack and defense 50 percent critical hit chance 50 percent and evading enemies 50 percent basically after two turns after transformation oh on top of that let's just throw this ridiculous power yeah, power in here chance of foreseeing um or high chance of foreseeing enemy super attack when there's a Jace on the team. So there you go. Uh, when he transforms, it's really, really strong. Yeah, you got the guaranteed um, effective against all types when the Ginyu Force ally is on the team. But, you know, I, I kind of rather have 50% crit chance. <laughs> so, well, 50% crit chance with attack and defense 50% and evasion 50%. That is a re ridiculous change and just super super powerful what also thing i like about this unit here is that uh the link skills don't change and I, I get annoyed when that happens but in this case scenario it stays the same so that's good 
and uh yeah categories and everything stuff stays the same as well so yeah just a really really strong unit here so when you're building a team and you want to run this unit in, in captain ginyu here you're generally going to want to run a ginyu force team so uh, when you're looking at your options here if you run captain ginyu as the leader and the friend uh you can have the banner units on the same rotation and they i believe have a five link uh set there and then captain king is going to do the rest and then of course when he transforms even even better however you know those two banner units on there i would you know they're decent i would say jace and birder is better and when you transform you need to have a jace anyway so um and in the celebration i remember you know uh, talking about the uh, free-to-play Ginyu Force getting the EZA, so that's going to be a support unit along with another, you know, Ginyu Goku unit you can run as a support unit, and then you can bring one of the free-to-play um, Ginyu Force there as well. However, you know, I think you might be still be better off um, running something like this, though. So you're going to run a triple support with, you know, one of the Space Traveling Warriors and Terrifying Conquerors uh, units here. And I think that's probably a better fit, even though you're not going to link well. They're, they're already going to link well already if you're going to run main rotations with those Ginyu uh, force units there. And But you have these extra support units that can still do damage. Oh, by the way, if you just want to run like Frieza on ro on rotation, main rotation, or uh, as a floater, that's up, that's up to you. It's a choice right there because he is Planet Dynamic Saga. He's Terrifying Conquerors, all that good stuff as well. Space Traveling Warriors. So... Again, really, really fun team. Uh, I believe this is what's going to be the next celebration. I don't think it's going to be Raditz. But if, it's, if it is Raditz, let's, let's talk about Raditz. Um, he sucks. So that's pretty much all I have to say. So with that, hope you guys enjoyed this video here. Who is it going to be? Is it going to be Raditz or is it going to be Ginyu in the upcoming Dokkan Festival exclusive celebration? Uh, in June on Global, take your pick. I say it's probably going to be Ginyu Force, but uh, I would save some Dragon Stones if it was Raditz. Uh, but with that, if you're new to my channel, like, subscribe, comment below, do all that good stuff. Thank you all for watching. Keep on Dokkaning. We'll catch you next time. Later.